What is going on YouTube? One only X Room here. Welcome to the channel. Are you new at getting tracksuits? Are you new at trying on different things? I was, and I didn't know a few things that would have made my life a whole lot easier. So stick around. This video is going to kind of go over the little nuances about buying a tracksuit that you should know before going and wasting your money or buying something you don't like. So the first major detail you want to think about when getting a tracksuit is your budget. What is it that's going to give you the most for your money? And you have to think and be real with yourself. Are you going to use this track suit? Are you going to go to a lot of track days? Are you really going to get the most out of it for the money that you put into it? You know, sometimes people want a very simple suit and that's perfectly fine as long as it covers you and it, and it reaches the requirements of the track, hey, you're golden. So the next thing that you need to know before you get a track suit are your measurements. And specifically, you know, what is your chest width? What are you, what is your waist? What is your inseam? What is your arm length? You know, when you go to sites like Revzilla, they actually give you that sizing chart for that manufacturer. So it makes it a little bit easier. So you don't need to go to each individual one. So definitely have someone help you and show you how to properly take the measurements for your body. So that way you get a suit that really fits you. Now, there is a little caveat to that because if you work out, if you're oddly proportioned, like you have short arms, we have a long torso, you know, anything like that, these measurements are going to be more of a guideline and not so much as a hard set rule. In case in point, when I got my Alpine Star tracksuit, I should have gotten a 52 because of my height and the inseam and my waist, but because my chest is a lot wider, I had to go with a 56, which created a worry that maybe the sleeves are going to be too long or the pants are going to be too long, but that actually wasn't the case. So when you do take your measurements, just keep in mind it's more of a guide, like it says, as opposed to a hard, fast rule. Unless you know the brand really well, like I know Alpine Star pretty well because it's pretty much all I wear, I know what they're going to fit like. But if you don't, you're going to want to try on different manufacturers because they all fit differently. Now when we talk about cost, we have to talk about material. Everyone knows a lot of leather is cowhide and there's varying levels within that. You're going to pay for the more expensive than softer and nicer leathers. Again, a synthetic leather is going to still be pretty protective and it's gonna cover you, but it's gonna be a good bit cheaper. Whereas something like kangaroo skin is gonna be really expensive. So you're looking at a suit that's anywhere from four or 500 bucks, kangaroo skin, you're topping 1,500 to $2,000. So you really gotta think about, again, how much you're gonna use it and if it's gonna be worthwhile going to a $2,000 suit when you ride it one time. Another aspect you need to look at when you get a track suit is whether or not you want a one piece or a two piece suit. Now, one piece is more common and when it comes to the events, it's gonna be more widely accepted because there's some events that you're gonna to go to that two-piece suits aren't allowed. Granted, the benefit of the two-piece suit is you can wear their leather jacket with regular jeans or you can you know, sync them up and go up the mountain with the two-piece suit on. That's, that's all perfectly fine. And most two-piece suits are right around 1,000, 1,100 bucks, if not a little bit cheaper. But again, you wanna have the best advantage to be able to go to the track and not have any issues. So a one-piece suit is really something that I would recommend over a two-piece simply because of that requirement that a lot of these tracks have. Now the next thing you're gonna to wanna to look at in your track suit after you've looked at the price, after you've looked at the sizes and the materials, and kinda of look at the, some of the features that they have in them. You know, where I live in Arizona, it's very hot, so a perforated leather suit is something that I definitely want because even if it's cold out, it's still not that cold when you're moving and, and really working the bike. So you're going to want something that breathes really well. Now, if you're in a place that's a little bit colder, yeah, a uh, non-perforated would probably work. But again, you know, you want something that breathes really well and that goes back to sort of your price point. There's decent perforated leather suits that are like, I'm looking at one that's $450 and that you can wear in different places because it's a one piece suit. Uh, you also want to look to make sure that there's enough room in there to put uh, like a back protector. Like most of them, they do have their own armor in the back, but you can actually wear another piece that goes underneath and it'll protect your back and, and kind of sides a little bit more. So you want to look at there's room in there to actually put something like that in it. Now after you go over your features, obviously colors are going to matter because if you can get one in your price range and you can get one in your size and get one with the features you want, now you're gonna to wanna to want colors that match, right? Cause I mean, that's what I do. I like things that match. Now, in, in reality, I try to go with lighter colors. My suit's more white and gray than it is black. Again, I ride in a very hot climate. So having a suit that doesn't soak in all the heat like a black suit will is, you know, my personal preference, something that I definitely want to avoid is heat soak when it's already hot outside, right? Now, once you have your suit all picked out and you have everything you need, you have it ordered, you have to think about two other aspects of your gear when you go to the track. 
your gloves, and your boots. Now, your normal riding boots that you wear for the streets, if you're like most people, you know, myself included, I have an aggressive street boot that comes just above the ankle and is great for the street, but it's not gonna cut it in a lot of places and a lot of tracks because they need that higher shin type boot. You know, not quite a motocross, it's real big and clunky, but you know, that size and that protection is what you want for a track boot. So this is what I'm talking about. This is a good track boot and it's way more protective than what my normal street boots are because my street boots come up to all about right here and there's not all of this extra bit, there's not all of this extra protection here you know, on the ankles. I'll go over these boots in a different review later. Also, those of you that wear the shorty gloves, those aren't gonna fly on a track either. You need the long gauntlets to come down to here and have a nice strap over the wrist and all that good stuff. So when you invest in track gear, you're not just looking at the suit. The suit's gonna be its own cost, but you also gotta look at your boots and your gloves because those are also gonna keep you from being able to ride on the track because of you know the safety precautions and the requirements that the different tracks and the different programs that put on these events have. You know, work with the people in a shop like Cycle Gear or even your local dealership. You know, they can order stuff for you. And that's what I did. I worked with my local dealership and the guys that work there really know their track suits, really know their apparel, and were able to find me what I wanted. And it took some time, but uh, that's really what it's gonna take to kind of get something dialing into what you want. Now, there is one other thing I wanna mention about your suits, and it has nothing to do with it itself, but what you wear under it. I like to not stick to my gear. <laughs> in a track suit, especially ones that don't have the nice lining in them that are you know leather and they're gonna to stick to your skin. So when you sweat, taking it off is gonna be like peeling yourself. It's just gonna be a nightmare to try to get out of. So you wanna wear it's like those Under Armour long sleeve and long pants uh, compression gear is pretty much compression gear you can have warm weather or cold weather either one obviously depending on where you're riding but that compression gear is going to allow you to slide in and out of your suit a lot easier it's going to make your life a lot easier trust me i'm going to put do a video of me getting into my track suit and if you've never done it it is definitely a dance and it takes a little bit of effort but having that stuff on underneath is going to make it a world easier i hope you guys enjoyed this video the next one coming out i'm going to go over that tracksuit behind me i'm going to go over some of the features on it i'm going to go over my gloves that i have and I'm going to go over the boots that i also have to kind of match everything up and i'll put it on and put on a nice spectacle for you all it'll be uh it'll be entertaining to say the least me trying to get into that suit so with that you all have a good one i'm out